Hello. Welcome to another edition of Cooking Through History. I'm your host, Aaron Ramirez, uh, manager of the Special Collections here at the Rawlings Library, part of the Pueblo City County Library District, as you know. So today, uh, we're going to do some cooking uh, with uh, my colleague, Blake Hatton. Uh, and um, the things that we're cooking come from the 1987 Colorado State Fair recipe cookbook. That's, that's the right, that's the right term, right? Recipe cookbook, not just cookbook at any rate. Here we are. So what we're going to be cooking, uh, this has a great selection of dishes. Uh, what we're cooking are dishes that were demonstrated in the creative kitchen uh, there on the state fairgrounds back in 1987. So uh, if any of you have been in the Ag Palace, you know, uh, during the state fair, watching those guys do their cooking channel, and there's a big mirror up ahead, and you can see what they're doing in the pan. This is one of those recipes. Yeah, so just transport yourself back to 1987. Uh, state fair starts today, the 2020 state fair, um, a little modified uh, due to COVID. Uh, but there will be food, uh, fair food available, but uh, no cooking demonstrations. So maybe we'll fill that gap today. Yeah. So this is a 1987 Colorado State Fair brochure, the Creative and Fine Arts, FFA, Agriculture, all the stuff uh, that's going on back in 1987. Uh, we have this as part of the State Fair collection in our archives. So. Uh, in addition to these programs, we have like uh, promotional uh, photos of, uh, of entertainers that were there at the fair. Um, and this is just a where to, when to kind of guide uh, of the fair back in 1987. So there we are. So if you're interested in this, if you're interested in the history of the Colorado State Fair, we have a uh, a ton of original documents from back then, in addition to these uh, these 80s uh, cookbooks. So, put that up, and uh, what we're going to do today is cook uh, Camarones Monterrey um, from Jeff Dawkins and company uh, at the Cottonwood Restaurants. He was the demonstrator. And those are restaurants in Eula and Pueblo. Had you ever gone to the Cottonwood place? I don't think I ever have. I think before, it's before probably before my time. Okay. 1987 uh, is I'm dating myself. That's a few years before I was born. So. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, Blake is very young. Uh, so uh, as part of that, we've got to make a salsa. And then we're going to cook these shrimp. Uh, so we're also going to cook rice in the microwave. That's right. You heard it. Rice in the microwave. Uh, that's about my skill level of cooking. Uh, at any rate, this was presented by Chef Donovan John Fandry, author of micro, uh, host of the show Microwaves Are for Cooking. Who would have thought, right? Uh, and he was a NASA space space science lecturer who then sold microwaves from his store and then promoted the use of uh, cooking with microwaves. Um, at state fairs, I guess, right? And, and other places. So um, let's get this salsa going. So first it, can, it, it asks for a uh, 32 ounce, one 32 ounce can of tomato juice. And so- This is a much it. different salsa than I've ever seen before. Yeah, we're gonna see how it goes. So this is 16 ounces uh, and it says, in blender combine half of all ingredients except mushroom and blend. This is a salsa with mushrooms in it. Yeah, so pretty wild. Let's see how it goes, right? Okay, so half of 32 is 16, right? So we're going to put this directly into the blender. Boom. Okay. Now it can ask for four ripe tomatoes, uh, and we've got two here. And so Blake's going to chop up uh, two more tomatoes. And let me get you a knife, Blake. I think a little one here might be a little one or a big one. Uh, you know, I can work with that. Out. Here's a big one. This might be easier. Okay, so I'm going to put half. This is 
those two tomatoes there. I just use Roma tomatoes. They're pretty cheap and uh, they're good flavor. And I wasn't totally sure. They didn't say like large tomatoes or whatever. So Roma's a pretty good bet. Uh, you can get those just about year round. We have two yellow onions. And so I've got one yellow onion here. And so Blake is gonna do all the heavy lifting here today and chop up a, another onion. There you go. Okay, what else? Uh, one bunch of scallions. Does that go in the boiler too? It does. So I will chop some of those up quick if you want. Okay. Well, I got, I got it. Okay, you can keep going doing that and I'll get the scallions. So scallions, as it turns out, are also known as green onions. I was a little concerned. I was uh, confused that they were uh, shallots. So I spent too much time last night kind of fretting over where am I going to find these scallions. Uh, but it worked out. I heard somewhere that shallots aren't actually onions. They just taste like them. Mm. What are they then if they're not? I don't know. Okay. Some kind of some kind of root vegetable tuber. Yeah. All right. Yeah, shallots are pretty good. Uh, I really like the green onion or, or scallion. It's a uh, love it in Asian dishes, on baked potatoes. I think they are the superior onion. Unless you get down to East Texas, there's a little town called Noonday. And uh, they they grow some sweet onions down there that are out of this world, kind of like the Vidalia onion. Um, all right, so we have our bunch of scallions, and we're gonna put half of these things in the blender or food processor. Uh, now it says eight ounce can of mild peppers. And I'm going to, I know where we are, and uh, I know this is a, a sin, but we were just using canned chili peppers from the store. Uh, my advice to you would be to get some fresh peppers uh, from out on the farm, but uh, this is what we're doing now, okay? So we got half of those chili peppers, and what else? We're going to do one teaspoon of red pepper powder and some fresh garlic to taste. So, this is the hot stuff. So, we're just going to put a little bit in there. And. Easy way to do garlic is you have it the cloves. You're gonna get the side of your knife and press it down, and that's gonna crush, pre-crush the garlic a little bit. And there it is, voila. So I'm gonna do two cloves here. I would probably do three to four cloves at my house because I'm a, a garlic junkie. Do you like garlic? I love uh, Blake. I love garlic. It's pretty good. Um, I put it in my mashed potatoes. Right. Um, it's like a garlic with or a meal without garlic is not a meal. It's a meal wasted. Exactly. Maybe. Yeah. It's not yeah. living up to its true flavor potential. Yeah. So You notice that I chopped up the garlic a little bit for something that's going to go into a blender, so that's not very sensible, but it's okay. Uh, It'll help everything be more uniform. Yeah, two stalks, two stalks of garlic, of uh, celery. Alright. Put that in there. What else? 
And yeah, that's about it. We're going to add some uh, salt and pepper here. It's a, it's a good pinch of salt, pinch of pepper. Now let's see if this thing cooperates. Boom. Fresh salsa. Yeah, it looks like salsa. I was worried that the liquid was going to be too much, but it, it was not. Ooh. Oh, wow. That's a hot pan, guys. Don't hurt yourself. That's okay with Frank as professionals. Both of us in other lives were working in the restaurant business. And or yes, ac yes, actually. Uh, so uh, it's going to be okay. <clears throat> If you have a fire extinguisher on hand if it gets too crazy. So now we've got this salsa simmering. And so, uh, yeah, it says to combine half of all ingredients except mushrooms, the eight ounces of small fresh mushrooms. So let's recap. One 32 ounce can of tomato juice, four ripe tomatoes, two yellow onions, one bunch of scallions, eight ounce can of pepper, chili peppers, uh, one teaspoon of red pepper powder, uh, and uh, some fresh garlic to taste, two stalks of celery, and eight ounces of fresh small mushrooms. So we're blend we blended half of those things in the blender, except for the mushrooms. Uh, then we diced everything else. So uh, combined, Combine the blended and diced ingredients. So let's do it. I guess we're gonna go ahead and get it in there. Awesome. Thank you. Um, let's see. So Blake's done an awesome job of dicing up the celery, and we've got the the yellow onions and the scallions in here. So that's that's looking pretty good. All right, so now that this is working, what else? We need those chilies, and then we need the rest of the tomato. I think we need a bigger pan. I'm noticing a pattern here, and that happened last time, too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, we've already committed, so we're just going to stick with it, okay? Um, Awesome. So you got this, those mushrooms. While Blake is finishing up with the mushrooms, I'm going to put a lid on the, uh, the salsa, and then we could get going with our rice. Okay? So for the rice in the microwave, uh, it's going to call for one cup of long grain rice. Uh, I'm going to reach across you here. Got one cup of rice. And put this in about a three-quart casserole dish. Uh, I'm using this plastic dish, but I'm sure if you had a traditional ceramic dish, that would work too. Uh, and two cups of water. And one more mushroom here. That'll give us a good. I've never had a sauce with mushroom bread. Me neither. Uh, there have, I've had some stuff where it's like uh, mushrooms and uh, cheese mm -hmm. kind of thing, uh, but never a salsa with mushrooms. So this would be pretty good. 
So we added two cups of water. And put the move the water away from the fryer. So we've got a special uh, food coming up. And so now you place rice and water in the casserole dish and microwave pie uncovered for 12 to 15 minutes. So let's do it. So while Aaron's doing that, if any of you were actually at the 1987 State Fair and there's anything that sticks out to you, let us know in the comments. We were, we're kind of interested because, like I said, that was before my time. That was before Aaron was here in Colorado. So Yeah, I was uh, four years old in Texas. So. so Got here as fast as I could, though, right? Well, that was me. I, my parents were born and raised here, but I wasn't born here. Yeah. Where were you born? I was born in California. Oh, <laughs> nice, was... nice. Surfer boy. I, I, no, well, we left when I was like a year old, so oh. that doesn't really count. Okay. All right. No surfing. <laughs> no uh, surfing. Yeah. So the uh, the rice is cooking in the microwave. Uh, I've got a three-day beard. I don't plan to shave now. Have you guys, you know, are you familiar with that song? I am. Okay, yeah, that's a classic. It's it very is a classic. Good. Uh, so here we go. The salsa is looking pretty good. Uh, and it's cooking away. I'm a little worried that it's not going to be reduced down and ready by the time we're done with this broadcast. But leave it uncovered. No that's okay. Do you think it would it would it would cook faster with the lid on? Or faster, off. yes. Okay. Uh, uh, reduce faster, though. So let's not reduce it then. We're just gonna we're just gonna keep it going here, okay? So now we have the the salsa cooking. Uh, so the next step is to get these shrimp involved, okay? So uh, we have a pound of peeled Gulf shrimp. Uh, I like the, uh, yeah, the Gulf of Mexico, shrimp from the Gulf of Mexico are really good. Um, I got these uh, from the butcher and they are de-veined, but uh, if you need to de-vein it, you can cut across here and then use a fork to kind of lift that vein out. Or I've seen also people just use, come in here and then get the vein out. And then you have to butterfly these shrimp. so. You start on the, let's see, the back side, I guess, and you will. Cut a little bit. Well, I've got most of them done. I just have two to, to demonstrate here. And so what you'll end up with is a butterfly shrimp. Uh, for the the recipe today, parece uh, un mariposa, una mariposa, butterfly in Spanish. A mariposa, right? So now I'm getting this uh, shrimp, shrimpy cutting board, and I'm gonna put it over here, and also my knife, so we don't cross contaminate. So the the uh, the recipe says simmer until vegetables are cooked. Uh, we kind of don't have that much time today, so we're just gonna let them let them go. Uh, add. One cup of dry white wine. I've got a Pinot Grigio here, but you could use a uh, Sauvignon Blanc or a Pinot Gris or a Pinot Blanc. Uh, and this is just the cheapest, literally the cheapest wine that I could find. Um, and so we're going to put one cup. And I think they have cooking wine at the grocery store, right? They do, but uh, cooking sherry is what you usually see it as, mm. and it's a little, it's a little different. Yeah. So you can see that the salsa is cooking along, simmering. The uh, the vegetables are starting to get a little cooked here. I'm going to add that wine, which is going to kind of cool down the pan a little bit, which is not great, but we can we can deal. Um, so add wine and shrimp, making sure that the shrimp are laid flat with the tail sticking up. Okay. I think we're going to need to leave the lid off of this one. Yeah. So I'm just going to arrange the shrimp in here. And it says to lay them 
face up, but who has time for that, honestly? Uh, uh, they, you know, we're not the Egg Palace chef, so... We, we are not at that level yet. Expect us... Expect us to start selling you a cheese grater very soon. 2021, maybe? Yeah. Once we're back in full action, Colorado State Fair, please hit us up. <laughs> uh, so, and I did leave the tails on because that's classier. Everybody knows that, right? Yep. Okay, much fancier. Um, I have, this is looking like a paella or something. This thing is full of good stuff, honestly. So, we're putting the shrimp in. It's like smelling pretty good. Okay. And I am going to put the, the lid back on just so that I can get some heat on top circulating over the shrimp, and hopefully this will speed up the cooking process. Um, let's see. So I'm going to get some hand sanitizer. Uh, Blake, why don't you do the our special our special treat here? All right, I think I will. Yeah. Uh, so. Yep. Yeah. So. If anybody has been to the fair, then I can guarantee you've seen the trailers uh, parked along the midway, you know, selling deep fried foods of all kinds. So what we're going to try making, I've never tried making this before, but we're gonna we're gonna try deep frying Twinkie, and uh, we're gonna cut it into medallions to make it a little bit more shareable. But the pr principle is the same. I have my recipe here, and we uh, we have a basic batter. So I think I'm gonna get started on that and just narrate as I go. Yeah. So the first thing that we need is a cup of milk. And there's our deep fryer to the rescue. Can't deep fry a Twinkie without a deep fryer. So I need a cup of milk. And we might have some batter left over. I think that this recipe was for six Twinkies. I think we have four. So I got my cup of milk. Let's see, where is the vinegar area? Uh, the vinegar is right here. Got the rest of the ingredients here. I'm a little bit nervous about mixing uh, vinegar with milk, but we'll see what we'll see what we can do. We're gonna, uh, dry ingredients separate, right? Okay. Well, here we go. I think in a batter, I think in a batter you should be okay. And then okay. Have a wet ingredient. So we're gonna go with our flour here, and we need some oil. Oh, that was uh, that was powdered sugar that you just put in there. Oh no! So uh, well, here's what we can do. Oh, uh, that's a glaze. That's not a glaze. Okay, <laughs> yeah, this will be the glaze later on. Uh, so here is the flour. Oh no! Okay, we're and okay. we're gonna I, uh, get this going I, I here. Just I, oh no, <laughs> we're okay. Let's yeah, we're good. We're good. We're good. It's powdered sugar and milk. There's worse combinations in life. All, All right. right, awesome. That's so, for, for your flour. So while Blake is getting the Twinkies ready, we have the Camarones cooking. Uh, we've got some of them, some of the, uh, the shells are turning a nice pink. Uh, and so they're, they're becoming non-translucent as the recipe says. That's what you're looking for. I smell that wine that we put in earlier and uh, everything seems to be coming together pretty well. Uh, as far as the rice is going, we have five minutes and 12 seconds left, folks. So by the time we get these Twinkies uh, cooking, I think we're going to be in good shape. And this calls for a teaspoon of baking soda. I think I'm just going to eyeball it, because that's what cooking really is, isn't it? It's just eyeballing everything. It's so, an experiment, yeah. So I'm just going to eyeball a teaspoon there. It looks, that looks good enough. All right. And half a teaspoon of salt. Do we have our salt out there? Salt right here. Right there. This is salt. This isn't sugar. That is salt. Okay. <laughs> I just want to make sure. Yeah. yeah, that is salt. All right. That looks good. And now. Did you get the sugar? The, I have not gotten the sugar. Okay. And that one, what is that on here? Milk, vinegar, oil, flour, baking soda, salt. It doesn't look like there's any sugar. I think that is why when you get your deep fried Twinkie at the fair, 
they cover it in so much powdered sugar that the minute you take a bite, you right. aspirate the sugar and you pop it all over yourself. Okay, so yeah. we got that sugar covered. Then we got on that the back in. Yep. Okay, so, great. And that's why I wore black today, so that way when I eat this powdered sugar covered medallion mm -hmm. of Twinkie, that way you can see how what kind of coverage I get. Right. Yeah, you'll know him by his powdered sugar. So we're just going to mix up this. Uh, and I, I haven't added the vinegar yet. I'm going to save that to last, so that way, if anything curdles, it won't be as obvious. Because I'm afraid of that. This is uh, first time ever trying to make this. That's what we bring to you in live programming. This is a pretty thick batter, I have to say. This is more like a, it's more like a pancake batter than it does uh, like a deep frying batter. Yeah, add a little milk maybe to that. You know, I'm going to follow the recipe. And we're okay, <laughs> that's, that's a good idea. Uh, Let's follow the recipe and see what happens. In the background, I had my Twinkies, or uh, let's see, snack cakes, I guess. We've already said it, right? Yeah. Uh, in the freezer for two hours, okay? Um, so I'm going to take my cutting board that was not covered in shrimp. But well, we this smells vinegary. Lots of vinegar. We're just going to see how it goes, right, folks? Okay, so we've got the Twinkies, and what we're going to do is we get a plate. I'll put my Twinkies on, and instead of doing, like, the whole Twinkie with a stick on, we're just going to cut the Twinkie into little Twinkie medallions. We use medallions because that's a fancy term, and it elevates the whole recipe. Really. Yeah, it, 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 let, it, makes, it lets you think you're a little bit fancier than eating a deep fried Twinkie, well, which I don't mind, but you know, your mileage may vary. I consider this pastry, so I think we got it covered. Should we come up with a fancy name for this? Uh, Twinkie Nuggies. <laughs> that, was my, that was my guess. I like uh, it. Okay, so what I've done is I've taken one package. Let's do, I think one package is good, right? Yeah. Okay. So we have so, our batter now. Nice. And it thinned out a fair amount with the vinegar, so I'm glad I didn't add any more. Yeah. Okay. So, good deal. Um, so we got all the ingredients. Now we got our medallion here. So here's something to grab the Twinkies. What do you want to do with that, Blake? How are you going to do it? Um, I think the recipe says to roll these in flour, so I might get a little bit of flour in another bowl. Okay. Here you can use that plate. Right yeah. Um, the flour will help us with uh, batter adhesion. Yeah. So I'm just going to pour a little bit onto. So you have flour. Flour batter. Batter, and then. And then fryer. fryer. Yep. Okay. Good deal. Just get this out of your way for you. Awesome. All right. So I think I'm going to go ahead and use this from the get go actually. Okay, that'll work. I'm just dump it in that way. So we got. Here, so the oil is been, is at about 375 at this point. Um, I'm gonna put the lid on it to conserve that heat so that we get a good fry. Make sure that it's not too hot, otherwise your batter will burn and fall off of whatever it is that you're trying to fry. And also, the batter is good because it coats the whole thing and keeps that uh, delicious cream filling intact. So there's that. Uh, so I'm going to move this fryer over here without starting a fire, maybe, maybe not, a little bit over, okay, uh, let's check back on the shrimp. The shrimp are cooked, more or less, so no translucency, that's a solid uh, kind of white and pink shrimp, you got the vegetables going. Our rice is done. You can hear that rice going off, so that's we're going to leave that there for a second. Um, so now that we have the salsa, the wine, the shrimp, guess what, folks? We're going to cook the shrimp until the shrimp have lost their translucency. Translucency. Quickly add the cheddar and feta cheese. That's right. We're adding cheese to a seafood dish. Not common, but not unheard of. Okay. So we've got a half a cup of Cheddar, shredded cheddar cheese. So I got the sharp cheddar, adds a little flavor, right? And a shredded feta cheese, okay? So, 
my batter keeps coming off my uh, medallions of pastry. That's okay. We're just going <laughs> to roll with it. We're going to roll with it. We're going to see what happens. Just like we're rolling with this cheddar on top of a shrimp dish here. It's all good. Um, that's not a whole lot of cheese in the pan. I would probably add a little bit more, but like Blake said, we're going by the book. Pun intended. I'm going to put these in here with the fork. So we're, here's our first twinkie medallion. We're going to see how this goes. Uh-huh. Let's go let go of the fork. It's going. The twinkie medallion is floating. It's frying. It's beautiful. Let's, it is. Let's get them going. Yeah, this is, this is great. Going, yeah. Great success. I think I'm going to omit the flour here on this next one to see if I can get better adhesion on my batter here. It's kind of counterintuitive because that's what the recipe says, and we followed mm -hmm. the recipe, and mm -hmm. we saw how that went. Yeah, the recipe is from the internet, though, not a cookbook. So we all know that you can't trust the internet. You can trust cookbooks most of the time. You mean I didn't win an iPhone this morning? Uh, no. Dang it. No. I have no. to uh, call my bank. Uh, let's see. Uh, so we added the cheese on top of the shrimp. It did call to put the cheese on, on top of each individual shrimp, but we didn't do that. We just kind of put it on top. Cover with a lid and let cook for approximately one minute or until the cheese is completely melted. Uh, Okay, so here we go. The cheese is cooking. It's been about a minute, so let's check on the rice. And surprise, surprise, folks, the rice came out. The rice is cooked, and this isn't instant rice. This is like regular rice that takes 20 minutes to cook usually. So I'm going to kind of stir it up. Like Bob Marley? That's... <laughs> that is correct, sir. It is Friday, so let's do it. Um, okay, so I stirred the rice up. I'm going to let that sit for a second. It is kind of like uh, a little wet, but I think it will uh, absorb that, uh, that water and turn out pretty good. Uh, I don't know if it's crunchy or not. We'll, we'll find out. Uh, so we've got the rice done, and at this point... We are almost done, almost ready to plate this thing up. And I, I will say the Twinkies are floating. I, I poke them occasionally to make sure they flip. <laughs> They're going pretty good, yeah. And they smell like state fair food. I will say that. They smell they smell like the state fair. So that's, that's just, it's a shame we can't give you smell o vision here because it's great. Um, you know, if you don't want to go to the uh, fair tomorrow to do the drive through Twinkie thing, then, you know, uh, watch us here, and you're going to, we got you covered on your deep fried Twinkie fix. So I omitted the flour, and I'm definitely getting better batter coating on my Twinkies here. So we're going to, we're just going to keep putting those in. Some of them are getting a little close, it looks like, so we're going to pull those out here momentarily. Okay, so the shrimp is done. The cheese is melted. And uh, everything's going pretty good. It's a little hot in the pan. But that's okay. So it's basically cheese mixed in with all the salsa and everything. So it says to, with a large spoon, remove the salsa from the skillet and place on individual place, plates next to rice. Then divide the shrimp equally between the four plates, placing the shrimp on top of the salsa. So what I'm going to do is put some of this salsa down. And I think an, a problem that we have here, or let's call it a challenge, is that uh, we didn't allow the, the salsa to uh, to condense a little bit or to, to cook down. Reduce, that's the term I'm looking for. Um, so we got that. And I think I'm about to pull up our first bits of uh, deep fried Twinkie here. Let's see how this looks. That looks pretty good. That is, uh, that is battered and yeah. deep fried and yeah. I'm going to keep pulling out my okay. pieces here. And 
and it's going to let some of them get a little bit more done on some sides. Okay. Okay, so I've got the shrimp are out, and now we have salsa. You know, I'm just going to put some salsa on top, right? Let's, let's do it. Okay, so we've got some shrimp with the cheese and the rice. Good there, I have to say. Salsa. It's ready to go, guys. There you are. So let's see those. Uh, so here's our first yeah, pour set of Twinkies here. And the yeah. ones that I coated in flour, I will say that that's what the recipe said to do, and I did it. And I regret following the recipe. You know, as if your friends all jumped off a cliff, would you do it? And I did it, and I shouldn't have. And but, the, batter, <laughs> the batter fell off, I guess? It did. Yeah, uh, okay. But I didn't do that for the next set. And nice. so we have better we have better batter coating. Say that set. 10 times fast. Better right. batter coating, better batter coating. <laughs> uh, okay, so let's uh, let's get these boys, uh, these little Twinkie, Twinkie Nuggies. We're going we're gonna to finish it up with some powdered sugar. More? More. Trust me, it, you, you should almost not be able to tell there's anything under there. There you go. All right, there we go. So, uh, I'm going to reach under you. It's probably unsafe with the open fry. So, we've got our shrimp and our fried Twinkies. And now, uh, do you want to share a Twinkie with me, Blake? I would love to. All right. We're just going to let those go. For yeah, a let's see what happens. They're still. Right. We'll grab a Twinkie. I'm gonna grab this Twinkie. Cheers. Cheers. And um, let's see. It is way too hot. I feel it burning in my fingers. Right yeah, now. I would. I would. Agree. I'm just gonna take a little bite. That's pretty good. There yeah, it is. That yeah. tastes like a fried Twinkie. Yep. Um, let me see about the shrimp. Why don't you grab a plate, plate, and I'll, All right. I'll grab a fork for you. One thing I like about the uh, medallion format is that it's more crispy on the outside most of the time when you get the, the cold Twinkie, you know, it has a crispy shell, but this is a lot crispier all around, and that's good. Yeah, there's more surface area for your batter to mm -hmm. affix to, so that's something to consider. Uh, so I'm going to try this, this shrimp here. Let's see what we got. Got a little salsa. I'm just getting a little veggie rice combo. Mm -hmm. Very good. It's good. It is. Yeah. And I was going to say, even though there's no cilantro in it, it almost tastes like there is cilantro in it. Which is really nice. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe that's all the scallion. Maybe. It's good. I, I enjoy know. it. I mean, if you don't like cilantro, maybe. But I really enjoy cilantro. Yeah. You could totally add some cilantro. Kick this thing up. Or, you know, add some more, uh, some more spice. Add some more, uh, some spice, some Pueblo chili, maybe instead of yeah. the uh, store brought variety. Right, instead of the can. Yeah, instead of being a traitor to the town, <laughs> get get our act together. At any rate, so that's gonna be that's gonna be it for today. Um, so we're gonna sign off. Uh, thanks for visiting us and learning how to make uh, camarones Monterrey and uh, fried Twinkies and microwave rice. First time for everything, right? So uh, have a good one, and we'll see you next time.